Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting and Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we are going to talk about why I need feathers, why we need feathers on our arrows, all right? This is important because it goes way deeper than you think it does, all right? It's not just a simple, oh, they help you steer the arrow. I shoot a 450 grain up front broadhead set up with my inserts on my arrows. They're about that deep in there. Um, you've seen them on my other videos, but there is basically, um, like I said, you're talking 400 and 50 grains of arrow right here with that insert being this long all the way through the whole setup that's what I shoot so with that in my ultra high FOC that I'm shooting of th almost 31 percent my arrows I, I, they fly like darts okay these are my two bear shafts this one here is for my new testing arrow that I'm making up but this was the arrow that I used a bear shaft to figure out what exactly I wanted and how I wanted it set up. This is for when I get the new broadheads um, that are coming from Tough Head, that new wide cut that he's making me. This will be the arrow that I'll start making and shooting with that. This is my bear shaft that I was using to test and determine that kind of stuff. So it's important that we have that there. This one is you have even says right on it, it even says on there Northern Mist bear shaft you can see it under northern mist bear shaft right there okay this is my arrow that i use to bear shaft for all for my northern mist bows this is the one that's always there i shoot this all the time with my regular arrows okay i don't have to have feathers on there i can shoot this thing and it flies and hits exactly where i am all the way out to 30 35 yards i shoot it with my groups and my other arrows and it flies perfectly once in a while i get a little knock high some variables we'll talk about but for the most part if i concentrate i can shoot this arrow absolutely perfectly along with my other ones and get great flight I can watch this thing fly through the air exactly like it's supposed to and hit perfect I'm not getting weak I'm not getting anything I'm getting perfect flight with this with this bare shaft and I shoot it regularly as part of my arrows and I don't come up and shoot real close and specialized test it I just put these arrows I take all my five arrows four arrows I put them in my pocket I just grab one shoot grab one shoot wherever that bare shaft comes in it comes into the mix and I shoot it um, at the same distance and so I'm kind constantly always checking that all right I've always had the bear shafts and I'm using them regularly but even though I can do that with a bear shaft and I can make it fly perfectly even with a broadhead which if you watch some of my other videos I did a video about two years ago maybe three years ago where I took this arrow the shaft like this and I put a uh, uh, my broadhead on there and I bear shaft shot this with that big wide one and a half inch cut Magnus head three times at 20 yards and put that into a perfect kill shot all three times uh, with this actual arrow on there uh, with no feathers and so it's pretty impressive what my arrows tune can do to the point that I almost don't need them so if that's the case why do I still think feathers are so important why is it mandatory and why would I use such a big one okay I mean why use such a big feather comparatively if I, I don't need to use such a big feather well we're gonna cover that we're gonna break it down today a little bit and, and figure this stuff out let's go back in time for a second and then we'll figure these things out first of all if you go back a few years you know maybe five eight ten years ago um i don't know when i stopped shooting these but this is a five and a half inch chopped it myself but it is a five and a half inch high back feather that's what this is called shot these for pretty much 20 years straight on every single arrow fantastic incredible arrow flight this thing stabilized fast it worked awesome it, it did mine do not whistle they were tested that's why they're not quite an extreme helical on them because if i did it too tight they would whistle um i actually would shoot this and i would have somebody stand behind a tree and i would shoot it past them where they're safe behind that tree and they would tell me the level of whistling that they were hearing i've tested these things flawlessly over the years i'm very particular about my arrow setup but we use these big feathers because this arrow did not have quite the high, as high FOC. It was a heavy arrow. It was stuffed with a rope in there. And this thing weighed 740 grains, but it did not have the FOC. So we started getting into the FOC. I started realizing that I don't need to have as much feather and so I started testing and I went all the way down to a one and a half inch feather. I, I played, I learned, I experimented, I did all these things. And I found that for me, the perfect mix, which we'll get into, was a three and a half inch, which is what I have here, three and a half inch high back feather. I still make it high back. You can tell that they're still the same size as far as the height. They're both high back. And there's reasons that I did that. Okay, could I got by with a one and a half inch feather that long, a little one and a half inch feather on there? Yes, I could, and it flew fine under perfect scenarios. Now let's look at something on my arrow that some of you pros 
uh, out there are going to notice, some of you guys may not. Let's take a look at my arrows that I shoot on a regular basis, including my bear shaft arrow. All right. I want you to notice something as I spin this arrow. I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to keep it right here where you can see it against me. Okay, look at that shaft. See that black mark right there? See that black mark right there? Okay. And then if you look at, uh, let's go through them. Look at this one. Okay. See that black mark right there on it? Well, I'm bringing it in ring focus. Black mark right there. That is my riser side. That is not. Okay. Look at this one. Black mark right there. Do you see that? Okay. And let's see this one. Black mark right there. I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are probably already typing it on your keyboard in the comments. Black mark right there. See that? So how many of you guys are jumping in going, uh, your arrows are too stiff. Uh, you're shooting too heavy of a spine. Uh, you're plucking your release. You're not, your, your knock points dropping down. Uh, your bow's not center shot. You're torquing your hand. I can see it now. They're typing like crazy. They're telling me how to shoot a bow. They're doing it. Okay. You're correct on every single level except for the spine, but you're sort of cracked on that too as well. See, in a perfect world, when I'm shooting at my range right here and I want a bear shaft test and I want to check things and I draw in and I concentrate and I do it and I shoot and everything's good and I remember to not pluck my string and I remember to kind of bring in back tension, which I do, I don't know, maybe 0.07% of the time. Watch my shooting videos. I don't shoot with back tension. I, I, I don't do it. I, I don't care. But when you learn this stuff, what you're going to see is that I make every single one of those mistakes you're talking about. Okay, do it constantly. Um, and these marks that you're seeing on there are from me making mistakes and also from me shooting in very awkward positions. I don't stand here and do this every single time. I don't even shoot this way anyway. This is kind of really weird and not my thing, but uh, you know, I don't shoot this way, but when I'm bear shaft testing an arrow for the very first time, you want your bow, I shoot candid, but you want your bow straight up and down so you can see if it's left, right, knock high. You want that perpendicular so you get that effect. So that initial testing of the arrow, you get in, I don't even do it that way. I actually draw like this like I would and then I roll my body up so that I have that so, so everything is in perfect alignment but point being I don't hunt that way okay when I'm out here practicing I practice turned around behind me like this shooting I practice shooting that way I practice taking my body and shooting like this I shoot a lot of different ways that I'm going to experience in a tree stand okay I practice that kind of stuff I practice shooting like this and where I'm going this way and my upper limb is actually further down than my lower limb so I can get clearance on the tree. I practice all that stuff. Practice turned. So I'm shooting this way, but I practice turning with my body this way and just doing it like this. I do all of these different scenarios when I'm shooting, and the evidence is on my arrows. The evidence is also on my bow shelf. If you look at this carefully, you will see, see those marks on my, my riser right there, on my, my side shelf? Those are because of arrows hitting my side shelf. <clears throat> Again, here we go, <laughs> typing away. Your, your spine's wrong, you're this, you're that, you're right. Point being, I am not a target archer. I have no interest in target archery. I do not have any interest in standing here doing this crap and shooting this way in the woods. I don't target archer. I don't do any of that crap. I'm a bow hunter. I want to take my bow, I want to take my arrow, and I want to be ready here, and I want to be able to shoot. When that deer comes in, I want to be able to go right like this, just like this. Thunk and hit it. That's all I want to do. That's the only movement I need. But if he comes in over there, I want to be able to come in, watch him walk right by. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. There he is. Thunk and I hit him. Oh, he's coming on this side. He switched. I thought he was going to go here. He changed. What am I going to do? I'm going to shoot him right there. Thunk. Like that. I want that ability. Okay. Or this one that I just told you about. Okay. I mean, it's there. These are shots that are going to happen. Those shots are going to cause me to pluck a string. They're going to cause me to torque a string occasionally. They're going to cause me to torque a bow. Okay, I'm going to torque in a bow is this. Okay, or this. Okay, when you're hitting your arm a lot because you're torquing into it, or you're going to shoot and you're going to shoot, stretch out, punk, and you're going to do that, and it's going to kick that arrow off that shelf. Or you're going to put too much pull or uh, webbing in it, and you're going to throw it forward. Okay, I'll put it sideways here so you can see, but you're going to go that way. Or you're going to put too much heel, and you're going to go that way, and it's going to cause that arrow to kick off the shelf or to kick off the side plate. There's no way around it, okay? And then when I, if you look at the length of my arrow, let's grab an arrow here. So let's look at the length of my arrow tip. I'll back up a little for you. Watch how much length 
from here to here is left over from that shelf. I'm actually gonna put my tab on, we'll do it all legit, okay? So let's see how much arrow length, how my draw length will change for things. So if I stand here and I'm gonna shoot normal, okay? I'm just standing here like I'd be shooting in the yard, okay? See where I got there? Okay, now watch, I'm gonna turn like I was in a stand and I'm gonna shoot back this way and behind me. Let's see how much arrow is on there now, okay? Okay, fine. Now, what if I turn to go this way and like I said, I thought he was coming this way and make sure you can see me here. And I'm gonna turn and shoot like this. So if I draw, yeah, you will see it, watch here, okay? See the differences in arrow length? If I have to shoot down, right down below me, let's see what happens there if I can, if I'm coming in right here like this, okay? I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, okay. So look at the difference in how much arrow shaft I have hanging out. I draw 26 inches of draw this way. Here is 26 inches of draw right there. I promise you, in my hunting situations, that could be anywhere from 24 inches to 26 and a half inches, okay? Is that going to affect my spine? Yes, it is. Is that going to cause me to torque a bow if I'm shooting upside down or doing all this stuff? Yes. Torquing a bow, okay, torquing it this way, that way, heel, hand, any of that stuff is going to happen to me. It is non-negotiable. It is just a fact of life and there is no way around it in my hunting scenarios. So, with that said, what is the only way that I can make sure that my arrows recover from paradox, recover from my errors in my ability? Let's look at another one before I even get into that. Notice my string? Let's look at my string right here. What do you see, okay? Let's do this one. People are gonna, again, be typing on their keyboards. Watch this, ready? So here's my arrow on the shelf. Watch this, look. Oh my God, oh my gosh, what's he gonna do? There's not a second knock point on there. There's nothing down there to hold that. So when he draws, we'll do it upside down, but when he draws, he's pulling that down the string. Oh my gosh, what is happening? He has no control over that because there's not a second knock point. Again, before you go typing me hate mail, I don't want in that second knock point. Do I know that if I put another knock point on there that it will fly much better and that I will get more consistent results? Yes, but on the same note, know this. Okay, here comes a deer and he comes by and he's chasing, there's a buck chasing a doe and he comes by and he stops and boom, and I miss and I shoot right under him. Okay, as soon as I shoot under him, I take another arrow, I put it right there like that, get it on a string and I'm ready. Do you see how I did that? Did you see that? Watch, let's do it again. I'm gonna do it real time in slow motion, okay? Here he is, oh, he turned, he's looking away. I get that set, I get it right there, and I'm on, okay? Do that with a double knock point. Now let me do it for you in slow motion, ready? It goes like this, the arrow comes out, set it on the shelf where I know I'm quiet, okay? Grab the knock, slam it forward, and hit the string. I come in low, below my knock point. Doesn't matter where I come in, okay? Anywhere on here. All I have to do is hit that string, and it slides right up, okay? Done on purpose, okay? I don't want to have to do this, okay? I shoot, boom, okay, and I go, oh, I missed, I grab another arrow, I don't wanna do this. Okay, and then try and do this again. That's not gonna happen for me to try and fit between those two knocks. Not at all when I can pull that out, set it on a string like that, and be ready to go just like that, that fast. That is important to me. I am a hunter, I'm not a target archer. Again, if you use a double knock set, more power to you because you are going to have better arrow flight. You are going to have more control over that. Everything is going to be better for you. But I am a hunter, not, I could care, I care more about being able to kill these animals than I do about that arrow being 100% perfect. I have a solution for perfect arrows. And that solution is that I tune my arrows with a bear shaft to pure perfection in perfect scenarios. Once I have it tuned for pure perfection in perfect scenarios, I then rely on a perfect setup of feathers based on my shooting abilities, my plucking of the string, my piss poor release that does not and release where it's more of a and it lets it kind of hook off. Everything about my shooting tells me in the real world that this is what I need. The fact that I do not pop my, I do not have that perfect pinch of beer can with your back shoulder. I, when I shoot, it looks like this, okay? When I'm supposed to shoot, it should look like this with my shoulder blades, okay? People do that. I, I don't do that. I, I'm not doing it. It just doesn't happen. So knowing all of my flaws 
This is the amount of feather that I need to make sure that my arrows recover quickly, they hit where I want them to, they do what I want it to, and they pass through these animals correctly. So that is the reason that I choose to use the feathers I do. It's also the reason that these sizes are chose. And it's also the reason you're seeing these marks on here is because sometimes, like I said, I straight up fail and this is gonna bounce off the shelf occasionally. Especially like you guys just saw me doing that where I shot, I took the bow, laid on the ground, shot upside down. That's where these marks mainly came from was me doing a few of them. But it, it happens in all kinds of scenarios. If I short draw that bow, if I'm in weird positions, this is going to happen. Okay, because my shafts become too stiff for that. If I'm drawing 26 inches and this thing is flying like a dart, if I draw 24 inches in a weird scenario, it is now way under or over spined and it is going to bounce off that shelf a little bit. I do not shoot in a perfect world and I do not shoot with perfect form. These feathers allow me to be able to make the best of that and still hunt the way I want to hunt. So it is important to me um, that this stuff is there. So feathers are important. Also, these high back feathers are perfect for me to visually see that. When that comes down range and I shoot that and it's flying, this is what I'm seeing spinning through the air. Okay, I'm seeing that wherever it's at for you, but that's what I'm seeing coming towards that target. A big yellow golf ball flying right in and hitting where I want, telling me exactly where I hit. That is important to me. Same reason that these arrows are set up like this. If you look back to the arrows, I was using 15 years, 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, not a whole lot has changed com color combination wise. They're very similar, okay? The fletching has advanced, the arrow design has advanced, a lot of things have advanced, but being able to see that is important. I test these in the wind, I test these in pouring rain, I soak these down in a bucket of water and mat them flat as I can and shoot them. I soak them down and wrench them back and forth and beat, I test my arrows more than anybody else out there does, probably except the ranch fairy. He tests a lot of arrows. Um, but I am, my system, everything about what I do is perfectly tailored for how I hunt. These feathers are a vital, important part of my hunting equation. I know that the Ashby studies, and a lot of people say go as small as you can. This is as small as I can go and have the confidence for all of the weird predicaments I get into shooting wise, the fact that I do not use a lower knock point, the fact that I shoot from awkward positions, the fact that I occasionally torque the bow, the fact that I have a the worst release of anybody in the world, I promise you, my release is straight up horrible, and I just don't care to fix it because it works. I use zero back tension. Like I said, watch my shooting videos, okay? I mean, there's no back tension in that. I mean, maybe a little bit, but it's... It works for me in a hunting world, and that's all I care about. So am I doing everything right? No, very far from it. These, this level of feather that I'm running is what works for me. Find what level of feather works for you. On that new arrow that I've been testing, same kind of thing, same exact type scenario, okay? It works for me. It is exactly what I'm after. So feathers are very important. Don't rule them out. Maybe on the range, you're doing everything, you know, with your whole here, all this crap that everybody talks about today. That's how I shoot a traditional bow today. Okay, it used to be where it was canted. You know, people laugh at me now. They actually laugh at the way I shoot. People criticize me like, why do you do that? Because when I shoot a bow, I shoot like this. I hunker down in and I get set. My bow is canted about that angle right there. And that is how I shoot a bow. And people are like, why would you shoot like that? Today, the world is designed to shoot a traditional bow like this, okay? That is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my opinion. Now that's me. Now I'm not saying that's dumb, but in my opinion, that is the furthest thing from a way to, to hunt with a bow, okay? All of this movement, this drawing up here, the animals are down there, we're in a tree stand. Why, why do I wanna be up here? Or even out here, I wanna be there. And if I got my bow vertical, where am I gonna put it to get there? Even here, I'm, I, don't, I don't even wanna mention what right here I would catch in that bowstring and how bad that's gonna hurt if I shot that way. It's not for me, but if I can't that bow like this, now I'm ready to shoot any place down here. Okay, I can shoot any deer at any distance any way. Where if I'm set up this way, like they are, I, I, I don't know how, I, I don't know how this works very well for that, I'm not a fan of that. I want my bow canned. That's why it's canned, so I can work it. So I can be on the ground, sitting on the ground and shoot it. This is what I do. 
okay? This, I am a hunter. This is the way it works. And when I draw, there is no pointing up here or even pointing out level and coming back in and getting set, then bending at the waist. I'm already bent at the waist. That's how I shoot all the time. I shoot like this constantly. Why? Because then I'm already set for what I do. I am a hunter first and foremost. And when I draw, there is no swinging it up. I'm pointing at that animal as he's moving right there. I come in to draw, I shoot that animal. That's it. There's no crazy movement. It is what it is. So for me, in my shooting style, these feathers make all the difference. Even though I could technically shoot an arrow that has no feathers, I could do it with a broadhead all day long and be successful and kill animals like I've shown you in videos, feathers correct all of my A failures, all of my weak points, all of my things I do wrong, as well as some of the things I do wrong on purpose. So there you go. It's a little tip for you on why feathers for me are so vitally important. Hope you watched the video, hope you, or hope you enjoyed the video. Do not get on your keyboard and start typing to me about everything I'm doing wrong because I do not care. Don't tell me how if I use back tension, this will be better for me and I'll shoot better. Don't tell me that if I had a double knock point, all my problems will go. Don't tell me any of that. I just told you why none of it matters to me. If it matters to you, fantastic. I'm not taking it away from you. I'm not knocking it. I don't care if you shoot split finger, two under, three under. I don't care if you knock it, your eye, your anchor here. I, I don't care what you do. And I've said that many times. What I do is the way I do it, and I do it for a reason. Like it or don't, it's completely up to you. But this is the reason why feathers for me and high back feathers, even though they're shorter, are still vitally important to my shooting system. So thanks for watching. Talk to you later.